Hi everyone, I'm uh, WFAA Chief Meteorologist Pete Delkus. I, I want to give you an update on Dorian and, and I want to dive into the details of Dorian more than I have time for during our regular newscast. Get about four and a half minutes for that. I want to get, get into this just uh, fairly in depth uh, as to where it is, where it's going to go, the differences in the models, the timing, the intensity, and a lot of those details. Right now, uh, Dorian at this point, not that well-defined. I do expect it to become well-defined and an eye to start to form over the next 12 to 24 hours or so. At this point, it's about 800 miles off the coast of Florida. It's uh, here's the Turks and Caicos, so it's just off to the east of there. And currently, the official position has it 330 miles east of the southeastern Bahamas. It uh, has winds right now, still category one, winds of 85 miles an hour. The forward speed northwest at 13 miles an hour, that's pretty good. We want these tropical systems to move, uh, move, move along at a fairly rapid pace. We don't want them to slow down. That just gives them more time for intensification. But even with that said, in that 13 mile an hour forward speed, we're still going to see some fairly intense rap, uh, some fairly intense or some rapid intensification. The majority of the models do take it into coastal Florida, southeast Florida, parts of central Florida as we head through Labor Day on Monday. Uh, September 2nd. A couple of the models take it out into the uh, the Gulf of Mexico and then a second landfall up in the panhandle of Florida. The majority of them, though, as you can see, do keep it, you know, uh, really right across the peninsula and they just run it right up right up the peninsula from the uh, the central portion up to North Florida and then up into southeast Georgia or southern Georgia at a minimum. But uh, that's what the majority of the models are looking like right now. I, I think this is always interesting. The European model year in and year out is certainly one of the best models, not only in tropical meteorology, but in all of meteorology. So all of us look at the European model, you know, every time it comes in. But yesterday's forecast had it moving through the central Bahamas, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, then out up maybe around Naples and then out into the Gulf of Mexico and then made a second landfall up in the Panhandle, Florida. That was yesterday's model. So you compare that with today's model. Today's model, a similar track to Nassau, but it doesn't take it across South Florida. It takes it in the Miami Fort Lauderdale area, maybe a bit north of there, maybe up around West Palm, maybe up around Jupiter, and then it kind of hugs the east coast of Florida before it uh, moves a, a bit farther to the north. So that's the way that's the comparison with the European from yesterday to today. Of course, it will continue to evolve and continue to be adjusted over the over the coming days. And right now, landfall from this point when I'm recording this is about 90 hours away, at least official landfall. The position of it once again is uh, about 800 miles off the coast of Florida. And now I want to compare the American model to the European model just so you can see the differences. And there, there are many, many differences. A lot of similarities, though, through 9 o'clock in the morning on Saturday. They're both positioned here at 9 a.m. on Saturday, but they start to break apart and separate Sunday afternoon. American model more of a northern track, the European model more of a southern track. Look at Monday at 11 a.m. The European model is around Nassau. The American model is just off the coast of the United States. The American model by Monday night is making landfall around West Palm Beach. The European model is still around Nassau at 10 o'clock on Monday night. So some fairly significant difference here. Now as we move forward in time, the European model makes landfall around late Tuesday night, early, early on Wednesday morning. At that point, the American model is, is up around Tampa, somewhere up in uh, central Florida, and then they both slowly move to the north after that. But some fairly significant differences with the American model and the, uh, the European model. The European model by Friday night has it between uh, just to the north of uh, Jacksonville. The American model has it uh, just off the, uh, off the coast of uh, South and North Carolina. The official forecast track by Friday afternoon has it at a category three, a major hurricane winds of 115 miles an hour. Saturday afternoon winds of it strengthens even more winds of 120 miles an hour. Saturday, this is a Saturday at 1 p.m. We have winds of 125 miles an hour. And then on Sunday afternoon, now it's a category four winds of 130 miles an hour. Now it's running through the northern Bahamas. And landfall will be Monday afternoon, somewhere around Fort Pierce, maybe Vero Beach, just to the south of Melbourne, winds of 130 miles an hour. That's a landfall 
of Monday afternoon. By Tuesday afternoon, it's just south of Orlando. I mean, it only moves 50, maybe 60 miles over a 24 hour time frame. And during that 24 hour time frame is when we're looking at very, very heavy rain. Some of the models are forecasting a couple of feet of rain, one to two feet of rain. Of course, we're looking at a storm surge that could be nine to 10, maybe 12 to 15 feet for coastal areas. We're looking at a lot of flooding, not only coastal flooding, but in inland flooding as well. There's the forecast and this Two will change and have to be adjusted as we move through the next uh, the next to 24 to 48. Certainly again, 90 about 90 hours away from landfall with this system. But the one thing that I do want you to keep in mind is more than 80% of tropical storm related fatalities. They're caused by inland flooding, storm surge and or high surf. So the water is a problem. I and mean, we all focus in on the winds, the winds of 120, 130 plus. But remember, the water is a problem, the inland flooding, the storm surge and or the high surf. So please keep an eye on this system. I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into this to give you a few more details. If you have any friends, any loved ones, any family in the state of Florida right now, I mean, really anywhere from central Florida to the south or really anywhere across the state of Florida at all, they will indeed have some big problems as we head through this entire upcoming holiday Labor Day weekend. So keep it here for the latest and we'll continue to keep you updated.